Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Knockrinder. Thursday's story is a fascinating new advanced persistent threat called Dooku2. Today, Kaspersky disclosed to the world that their network had been breached. This spring, they found an advanced piece of malware which they called Dooku2 on their network. By the way, you might remember Dooku. This was a 2011 nation state attack that some called the son of Stuxnet since it had some similarities. In any case, Kaspersky said Dooku2 was a very, very advanced piece of malware. Some of its unique properties was it was an entirely memory based Trojan. It never put a file on the victim system. It also used a number of different zero-day vulnerabilities in its malware. Uh, two of the zero days have been patched, but one of the zero day uh, was a Windows elevation of privilege flaw, basically something that could allow you to become a domain administrator on the network. And apparently this malware, when it infects a system, it would use this flaw to become a domain administrator and spread itself to other computers on the network using an MSI installer file, which is how administrators often install stuff using group policy. In any case, this was a very, very advanced piece of malware that took Kaspersky admittedly a long time to find. And by the way, Kaspersky says they're not the only victim of this particular attack campaign. It was also used during the uh, P5 plus 1 events. This was, of course, when a lot of Western uh, countries uh, tried to negotiate with Iran to make sure that they didn't get nuclear weapons. So what's the takeaway for this network? attack. Well, first of all, I really respect Kaspersky, who's one of WatchGuard's security partners, for transparently disclosing the fact that their network was breached. Frankly, I don't think there's any dishonor in being breached. Nowadays, it's not whether or not you're going to be breached, but whether or not you will be able to find out when you've been breached. I think a good measure of a security company isn't that they have perfect security, but is that they react quickly when they do have incidents and take care of them. And for this, I think Kaspersky's done very, very well. I also think this attack should have us questioning our nation state's activities. Really, nation states should do more to protect their citizens and defend their networks from attack. This idea of launching these attack campaigns against private businesses, especially security companies that can help solve the problem, is a little disingenuous and kind of scary to me. I hope they stop this. Finally, Kaspersky offered some interesting takeaways for how they're going to continue to defend against this. They plan on using their sandbox system. And by the way, one of the ways you can catch the more advanced malware out there is with systems like WatchGuard's APT blocker. Systems that don't just rely on signatures to find malware, but rather use behaviors to detect malware that may never have been seen before. Another really interesting tip Kaspersky puts in one of their papers is to use 64-bit versions of Windows. You know, a lot of you probably are using 64-bit versions today, but it actually makes it a little harder for malware to do things since drivers have to be signed in 64-bit versions of Windows. In any case, this is really a fascinating story. There's a lot of deep technical detail, so if you want to know more about it, be sure to check the blog post associated with this video as I have a lot of links that reference uh, all kinds of papers on this. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.